if you can see that, but it's a very busy day. Hey y'all, so today is a new day. Today is a busy day. Last night I had rehearsal for a neglected trivia night by a new friend I've made during quarantine, Jeremiah Long, and that comes on tonight at 7.30, so please join us. And the night before, I had rehearsal for next week's performance of It's a Generational Thing by my dear new friend, Robert Fusong. Also, today, Clinda and I will be fine-tuning our outline for our Friday show. And oh, there's a performance today with Out of Box Theater and Positive Impact in, collaborating, in collaboration with the CDC. So, even though the One Minute Play Fest isn't happening this year, and I had many... And I had many reminders pop up of how it was occurring last year and the year before. I, I felt, I feel like I've had plenty of time to perform, which is awesome, amazing, yay. Um, which I always relish. I mean, and honestly, the people I'm getting to perform with in this summer are insanely talented, incredibly diverse, and some I have looked forward to working with for a very long time, and I hope to work with in person once we can all rebuild a life, <laughs> because we will rebuild stronger and better and hopefully with a lot more equity and rebuilding is what we'll do now to take a more personal spin the past few days i haven't been feeling well i am or at least i try to be as in tune with my feelings as possible and someone online gave the apt analogy relating to the coronavirus and the precautions disabled and immunocompromised people feel in that their bodies have already betrayed them once and the anxiety surrounding the coronavirus is valid because there's a real world example. They've experienced it of their own experiences with healthcare and their body not functioning the way they would like it. And I worded that horribly, so hopefully that makes just a little bit of sense. Um, but in context to me, being vigilant not only about my physical health, but also my mental health, because I've had both betray me at some point, my fear in backsliding is real and it is valid. And if you've been going through trying times during the past few months, your feelings and fears are just as valid. Even the fears of those in metropol those not in metropolitan areas, but more rural ones are rural drawer, very hard one. But more rural ones are valid. And while their reactions to those fears is definitely less than ideal, the fact that their reactions seem fear based make empathy all the more ready for me. Definitely no approval whatsoever, but the fear I can understand. So why am I talking about fear, mental health, feelings being valid, and whatnot? Because as, a, because as I've described to several friends, the past few days have felt like a depression flu. And going out to River's Edge over the weekend, several fears popped up, but also anxiety, grief, and sadness. Now I've taken the moment to process the loss in many ways in my daily life, the business, the adjustment to being at home a lot and all of that jazz. But some of the outlying losses I'd yet to process and I couldn't actually process them emotionally until I experienced them. And in processing the loss of what River's Edge usually means to Eddie and I, I brought up all the losses I'd already processed and made me re-examine them even more. And in processing loss, we also ran into an old friend of Eddie and I's who was also a really good friend with Sammy. And while it was really nice to reminisce about Sammy, there's still, his spirit hangs heavy over River's Edge. So acting in that loss of physical community, my spiritual home in Metron, where we all don't know when we can meet again. And Miss Leona and Miss Francis, I miss you all terribly, terribly, terribly. <laughs> there's a whole group of people I'm going to leave out, so I'm gonna stop giving shout outs right there, but Metron community, I miss you. I hate the fact that we've had to cancel our meditation weekend at Jekyll. And I also found out about that news this week. And I hate not getting to see Jim and Ken and everyone else who attends those things. Another trip with Eddie, Jill, Kathy, and everyone and I, we usually go down to the beach right after Labor Day. And we all made the decision to cancel that in light of all the news coming in and the current state of affairs because none of us can seem to really just wear the mask and control this virus. But really, there's no defense against a virus that's everywhere. None of those trips could have been safely done. 
the physical community has been lost in some sense. The physical sense of community has been lost in some sense this weekend. None of those trips could have been safely done. The physical community has been lost in some sense, and this weekend was a big reminder of that. And it took up until yesterday for me to process that emotion. At one point, Eddie asked me when my next appointment with Rico is, and I told him next month. But usually when he asks that, it's when he can sense that I am emotionally drained and trying to emotionally process something. Because... As my dad describes it, there's just kind of a light that leaves, and I can feel that light back though today. And I call what I experienced a depression flu because it onset rapidly, and it's not sticking around. I think Rico in this situation would tell me that it is situational, and yes. From the minute we got in the car Saturday morning to go to River's Edge, I felt sadness and anxiety, like just overwhelming, and palpable. When we got back Sunday night, I could feel it lingering, and even into Monday, every move felt like a struggle. Like, physically struggling to just kind of walk and do the things that I know that I should be doing. I didn't know if I could make it physically or mentally through Monday's rehearsal. But once I got into the swing of things, I was able to get outside of myself, and that is one of the things I love about theater and acting, is getting to get out, so to speak. On Tuesday, combined with the usual work anxiety I have and anxiety surrounding phones and customers, it seemed to compound the situation. I'm gonna be honest, yesterday felt like, the entire day just felt like a struggle. And it didn't help that the music I had used to help me process the entire time was Beyonce's Lemonade album, so that also magnified the sense of loss. See Sandcastles, because literally that was a song that was on repeat for a while, and I'm just not sure if that's the best music, but it's what I used. Um, I just felt on the verge of tears all day. I went to the grocery store after work and I felt like I was just wandering around like a lost soul. First through the wild aisle in search of Savignon and then through the laundry aisle because I haven't been able to find any laundry disinfected, any of the laundry defects, disinfectant I usually bought in the before times. I might also take a minute to add that dysphoria usually in these times is incredibly rampant, so there's just battling that on that front. And I have body issues outside of being transgender that quarantine has made a bit more difficult. COVID-19 pounds, yes. And then I get home, I take a nap. Well, first I ate because usually it's, what is it? Hungry, anger, hungry, angry. There's like a four acronym, whatever, usually so you don't fight with your partner, but it's examining those first few things. Usually, it can be that I'm hungry, but this wasn't the case, but it did help. Anyways, so I got home, I took a nap, and I wake up, and it's like it's gone. It's all certainly something for me and my therapist to examine. And I strongly, 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 strongly encourage you, if you were feeling down or sad or anxious, to reach out to mental professionals. I am not one, though I am happy to find ways that I can help you reach out to one, and always lend a compassionate ear, but again, I am not a mental health professional. I am just a mental health enthusiast. I've heard from many people having concerns about finances, and there are some places that work on a sliding scale. Lord knows I relied on them for almost all of my mental health needs as an artist. Hmm. Ultimately though, the therapist is your guide, and you have to put in the work. They're not going to solve all your problems, but they will give you the tools to cope more effectively to retrain your thought processes more effectively, and to give impartial advice. It is what I have gotten through Rico at Positive Impact and through my two previous therapists in Athens. Except for the one I went to my freshman year, he caused more harm than good, and you know who you are, so you should not be practicing. That's just me. Yeah. Nothing serious occurred. It just set me back mental health wise. Um, but yeah. I feel that from what I've gotten from Rico and from the DBT that I took, the dialectical behavior therapy I took in Athens towards the end of my time there, and then the skills that Rico has helped me learn at Positive Impact, it's been so incredibly helpful. And and yeah, even in the past few days, all the skills that I've learned, they I've been able to use them effectively. 
And so while I felt sad and I felt anxious and I felt depressed, I didn't feel entirely hopeless. Because that's the thing. If you do start feeling hopeless, definitely, definitely, definitely reach out. However, I think that's enough about me. And I guess I should take a minute to ask you all to join Clinda and me on Friday as we talk more about grief in the time of corona. How has loss impacted you? Are you quarantining alone? Because that's, that's its own issues. But if you have, or even if you haven't, how have you found a sense of community during this time? I really hope you all will join us and share because we are inviting people to share their experiences. That's what helps keep us connected and make us feel less alone is when we share. As always, keep bearing lightness of being. I love you all. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen, and I really do hope you'll join us in these endeavors. Um, hopefully you'll join me tonight. The Performance World Theater, you can check out the website. Hopefully you will join me this afternoon with Out of Box and Positive Impact as I team up to team up with the CDC to stop the stigma with HIV. And I feel like that's all I can really promote for now. But anyways, love you all. Until next time.